Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy and I'm in the Water Filter East Store and the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Today we're talking about repairs and maintenance of an Aquamaster high efficiency water softener like this one. What we're looking at talking about today is how to replace the piston and or the drive end cap assembly. The first step is to remove the lid. Troubleshooting may have indicated that uh, the drive end cap assembly or the piston uh, needs to be changed. So this is uh, what the assembly looks like, the drive end cap assembly, and this is the piston here. So to get started, the first thing we want to do is put the water softener into bypass. And then once we've done that, we want to hold down uh, the button and put it into regenerate mode. So it releases all the pressure that's inside the water softener. So we just hold it down for five seconds and uh, it'll say going to one and that'll start uh, the process um, to do that. So now once we get to uh, going to one, then um, we can un unplug it and uh, remove the controller to get access inside here. So um, as that's heading around, we can also remove the brine line here. So we're waiting for that to start. So we can unscrew that here. So normally these are just hand tight, but if yours is, uh, is tighter than that, you can just use some pliers to uh, start loosening it up. So now it's in backwash, so um, what we can do is we can unplug it and uh, unplug the other, the motor and the uh, flow meter. So we can unplug that, set that aside. And so we've got this loose. So the other thing that I like to do is the float inside here is to undo the nut because it makes uh, disconnecting this a little bit easier in the future. So we'll kind of set that aside. And uh, so you'll, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver to undo the two bolts at this end, two screws I guess at this end, and two long bolts at this end to be able to pull the assembly out. So we can start on that. Now if you are replacing the whole drive end cap assembly, you're going to need to remove this magnetic disc and the motor from the old assembly and uh, attach it to the new assembly. So if you're planning on doing that, um, you could remove the motor at this stage because it would make access to these two screws a little bit easier. There's only two screws holding the motor in place um, from the back side. And again, there are Phillips screws. You would use a smaller Phillips screwdriver for that than the one that I'm using right now to, uh, to remove the drive-in cap assembly. I have this water softener sitting on a chair, so that's why it's wobbling a little bit, but uh, yours would be uh, already installed. So then these two bolts at this end would need to be loosened. Now you don't need to um, actually take the bolts right out. All you need to do is just make sure they're disengaged from this end here so that uh, the whole assembly can come out. So that one's undone and this one is undone. And again, you just be careful when you're working on uh, with these screws, etc., that they don't fall in the brine tank. That will make it uh, difficult to retrieve later. Okay, so once we've got this disconnected, then this connection here, if we just uh, remove the cap and slide the float a little bit out of the way, this is easily undone. And uh, so now the whole drive end cap assembly is free. So we can just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Uh, applying some pressure to slide it out. Okay, so once we've got it out, so if at this stage all you were doing was replacing the piston, you would just take the piston and turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise, that disengages it and it comes out, and then the new piston you would just slide on, and again turn it 90 degree, degrees clockwise so it engages like that. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, if you're installing a new drive end cap assembly at this point, you'd remove the magnetic disc, put it on here, and also the motor. You'd have to remove the brine valve to get access to the magnetic disc. All right, so once we're at this stage, so you need to make sure there's two O-rings here. One is here and the other one is here, and that they have some silicone uh, grease on them to hold them into place and also to make a better seal. So once we're at this stage and so we can slide this back in, Again, wiggling it a little bit as we're sliding it in. Great. So we're all the way in there. So again, the reverse procedure. When we removed it, these bolts go in. 
pull that back a bit till they engage. And you can snug them up. And these two uh, go on this side together. So again, we can tighten those up. This one goes on the bottom. Okay, and before we tighten everything up, we'll get the float reattached here. And there we go, that's inside. Cap helps locate it. So this is the hex nut, the nylon hex nut that holds the float in place. So we can put that back on there. Typically hand tight is tight enough for that one. And um, this connection here for the brine line. Again, hand tight, or even just slightly more than hand tight is enough. Like that. And then we can uh, tighten up the rest of these uh, bolts. So, and on the other end, that one's tight. All right, so we got all those uh, connected. And again, we'll just make sure this one's tight at this stage. Great. And then we can take our controller and reattach it. This is the connection uh, for the motor. This is the connection for the flow meter. And this is the connection here for the power. Reattach that. And uh, so it's, it's reading going home. So it's gonna go to the home position. So that's uh, where we want it to go. Um, once it gets back to the home uh, position, then you can put the, the valve back into, into, out of bypass back into service. And that's at the point that you would check for leaks. Obviously if there's any leaks, you'd repair them at this uh, stage before you go any further. And then uh, make sure you're all the way back into service. And uh, if the water softener hasn't been uh, operable for a while because of an issue with the uh, drive-in cap assembly or the piston, then what you can do is uh, regenerate the water softener immediately by holding down the regenerate button for five seconds and that'll start up a cycle and you'll have soft water again. And that's it. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe <clears throat> If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified of all the new videos they become available on this channel. If you'd like some more information, go to our websites, either thewaterstoremidland.com or thewaterfilteresteer.com. And again, I'm Gary the Water Guy from the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Thanks for watching.